My God. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 practical effects in horror movies. Hi! It's me, Chucky. What do you think? For this list, we'll be looking at the best, most believable, or iconic examples of practical effects found within horror movies. Do you have a personal favourite? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Shark – Jaws It's well-known movie lore at this point that Steven Spielberg and crew had one heck of a time getting the shark, affectionately named Bruce, to operate correctly on the set of Jaws. The shark, swallow you whole. Shaking, tenderizing, down you go. The issues were so severe, in fact, that Spielberg was forced to hold back on showing the final special effects, which succeeded in building up the tension towards a final reveal. And to be honest, we actually think Bruce looks pretty good. That's a 20 footer. 25. Three tons on him. Worries about the shark looking fake certainly seem to melt away during scenes such as the first on screen appearance, or the harrowing demise of Quint late in the film. Jaws is considered an all-time classic for a reason, and one of those reasons is certainly cinema's favourite shark. You yell shark? We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Number 9. Digestion Death – The Blob There are few horror remakes from the 1980s that have held up as well as 1988's The Blob. The thing on that man's hand killed him and then it killed Paul. And whatever it is, it's getting bigger. In fact, many fans of the genre point to this entry as perhaps the finest example of the titular creature on screen. It's difficult to argue this point when the gross special effects are on display, such as the graphic digestion of Paul early on in the film. Doctor, come in here quickly! I'm with a patient. There's a man dying in here! Hurry! Excuse me a moment. The violence of his death is so brutal and realistic that it becomes difficult to even associate this version with the 1950s counterpart. At the same time, the willingness of director Chuck Russell and crew to absolutely go for it with this level of gross alien slime consumption has made the blob the stuff of horror legend. I did see your dad killed Paul. Sure. How about it, Herb? Can we take her home now? Yeah, you may as well, Tom, and make sure she gets a good sleep, huh? Number 8. Chucky – Child's Play The production of 1988's Child's Play is another example where restraint and tension actually led to the final effect being all the more impressive. The movie takes a while in building things up to the point where Chucky actually moves, speaks, and comes alive while in the presence of an adult. <laughs> Up until that point, the potential for it all to actually be just the figment of a child's imagination is plausible. Now you don't really think that Chucky is alive, do you? However, once we watch Chucky's scurrying feet, see those dangerous hands, and hear that iconic voice from Brad Dourif, it's official. A full-fledged horror icon is born. Seriously, the puppeteering and animatronics on display are top-notch. Number 7. The Shunting – Society You may be asking yourself, what the heck is a shunting? To which we'd reply, you're gonna be sorry you asked. After the first shunting, we'll have that special treat we've been hearing so much about. That's because this infamous sequence from the 1989 body horror flick Society is the stuff from which perverse nightmares are born. Special effects guru Screaming Mad George achieves here some sort of absorptive body melding as high society aliens suck out nutrients from their victim in perhaps the grossest way possible. <laughs> There's an almost gleeful humour to the scene, as classical music accompanies a symphony of slurping noises, all while George's sticky special effects work their magic. Don't say we didn't warn you. You know, you really deserve what's gonna happen to you, you know. What's gonna happen? You're gonna make a wonderful contribution to society. Number 6. Henrietta Noby – Evil Dead 2 the first instalment of Sam Raimi's Evil Dead franchise boasts some serious special effects, particularly when taking into account the director's limited budget. 
I have you disturbed our sleep, awakened us from our ancient slumber. That said, there's a marked improvement with the sequel, as evidenced by this fantastic bit of work from special effects designer Tom Sullivan. The director's brother, Ted Raimi, assisted in the production in bringing Henrietta Noby to life, playing the woman with heavy makeup as her deadite form becomes more progressed. Elsewhere, actor Lou Hancock plays Henrietta in her first deadite form, although we admit to being partial to the creature going full gooseneck, as it were, showcasing first-hand Sullivan's imaginative creations. Number 5. Glenn's Death – A Nightmare on Elm Street The world of special effects is full of questions like, how did they do that? The A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise has been front and centre for a number of such questions, such as the time when the third instalment shoves poor Jennifer into a television. This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV! Perhaps even more impressive, however, is the iconic bed scene from the first film, where a young man gets sucked into his mattress never to return. That is, unless you're counting the geyser of blood that shoots out onto the ceiling, in which case Glenn Lance most definitely returned to make an impression. Just not the impression he likely intended. There's a coroner got to say. He's in the John puking since he saw it. Number 4. Chestburster. Alien. Directors will often try a number of different approaches with actors, all in order to achieve that one perfect take. I don't want to talk about what it's made of. I'm eating this. <laughs> What's the matter? The food ain't that bad, baby. Ridley Scott tried something with the iconic chestburster scene from the first Alien film, in that he didn't actually tell the cast what specifically to expect. As a result, the reaction of actors like Veronica Cartwright are very real and very effective, as the whole cast got to view this tiny xenomorph burst out of poor John Hurt's chest. I've got to have something to eat before we go back. Yeah, I, I need some more yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> meal before bedtime, I'm buying. Hey, that's a break. It's grim, goopy, and never fails to grab our attention each and every time. As for Cartwright, maybe she would have liked the Spaceballs variation a wee bit better. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon gal. Number three, Brundlefly. The Fly. The cinema of body horror maestro David Cronenberg is littered with examples of special effects brilliance. Help me. Help me be human. One of these is the head explosion against which all others are measured from 1981's Scanners. Elsewhere, the amazing makeup effects used on Jeff Goldblum in Cronenberg's remake of The Fly stand as some of the finest ever achieved. I'm saying, I'll hurt you this day. Goldblum appears practically unrecognizable as Seth Brundle messily devolves into Brundlefly. He gains super strength, sure, but soon pieces of him are starting to fall off and that acidy spit sure doesn't look too pleasant. Finally, the transformation is complete, and the fly's grotesque final form is revealed. I'm afraid! Don't be afraid! No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Number 2. Transformation Sequence – An American Werewolf in London we just mentioned how Cronenberg perfected the subtle art of head explosions with scanners, but what about werewolf transformations? Oh, 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 oh. Cinema is populated by excellent examples, from Universal's original Beast to Joe Dante's impressive werewolves in The Howling. But, and this is a very big but. All of them need to take a knee and bow their collective heads to the alpha of this wolf pack, an American werewolf in London. Director John Landis and special effects legend Rick Baker constructed a transformation sequence that not only looks scary, but looks painful. It convincingly depicts the horror of physically transforming from man to wolf in bone-stretching detail. It's simply the best to ever do it. 
the goat of wolves, if you will. <laughs> continue be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. All of it. The Thing. It's difficult narrowing down one specific special effects moment from John Carpenter's 1982 masterpiece The Thing. I don't know what the hell's in there. It's weird and pissed off, whatever it is. This remake of The Thing from Another World remains leagues away from its 1950s predecessor in terms of special effects, thanks to a couple of certified legends, Rob Bottin and Stan Winston. The entire team created cinema magic with nightmare imagery, such as the dog thing early on in the film, as well as the disgusting sequence where an assimilated Norris is defibrillated, with harrowing results. <laughs> may have flopped during its initial run, but today it's thankfully been adorned with all of its proper genre accolades. It may just be the finest example of practical effects ever laid on film. When this thing attacked our dogs, it tried to digest them, absorb them. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.